Good, great evening to ya. It's your girl Key here at Key for Change Head and Mind Quarters. How is life treating you? Let's be having it. Let's be honest. It's far from easy out here. It is very tricky times and I thought I would take this opportunity to like let's talk about what's going on for people, what might be going on for you, how I may be in a position to give you a few tips as you may or may not know your girl Keely Tamina is a psychotherapist and I help all manner of people with all manner of life dilemmas. However, one of the things I'm absolutely passionate about is helping to people to make sense out of their experience because God knows it is far from easy out here and we all need it. Sometimes life can be confusing. Sometimes life can be a bit of a baffle and we kind of like need a little bit of guidance. Don't mean nothing's wrong with ya. Don't mean you're mad. Yeah, we need to move away from those stereotypes that keep people stuck. Keep people all by themselves. Big up the lady Fran. Is she girl key? How are you doing? I hope all is well with you. Feel free to inbox me. It's your girl Key. I'm here. Please do share this video with a friend, with a foe, with someone who may need to hear it. As I'm often told, I'm not your traditional psychotherapist. And sometimes that's really helpful to people because it helps to allay some of the fears because sometimes we need some you know sometimes you need just to talk to someone you feel like they're a little bit more down to earth and that they get it i'm here and tonight i'm going to be taking any of your questions about the pandemic like the blues what i'm noticing about the themes that keep emerging as you may or may not know as a psychotherapist i get a very intimate understanding of the human experience but what that also does is equips me with beginning to see themes that keep emerging in people's life and how let's be let's be having it you know i think one of the things i often notice is that we can often think what i notice in is 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 one of the things that impacts on people is that we often think it's us that we're the problem but actually there are bigger things going on and actually that has an impact but i think in our society we often blame the individual. Is your girl key? I'm here. I'm live. I'm happy to take any of your questions about the pandemic, what I'm noticing about people's well-being, how it is impacting on people. It's no joke out here. And one of the things, you know what, the best place for me always to go is with myself. One of the reasons why, and it's uh, why I'd like to think that I'm not narcissistic, but we all know that we have narcissistic tendencies because that's what makes us human. It's not a bad thing, you know, we just always have to watch it. One of the reasons why I often talk about myself is that I don't betray anybody's confidence. And that is of the utmost importance to myself, that I never betray someone's confidence. So it's one of the reasons why I refer back to myself. But I think one of the things about the pandemic that we, like this impact, this lockdown, Lonette David, good evening, Ishigal Kili Tavana here. Happy to take any of your questions. What are you noticing about your behaviour with this? Like, what, what are you beginning to notice about your behaviour? Has any of you noticed that maybe your eating habits have started to change? Let's be having it. Let's be realistic. Because it's no joke out here. You've got to watch your eating habits. Yeah, because Uber Eats, apps and all these things are just a ding dong away. And while it's convenient for those uh, companies, it actually may not be convenient for your waistline, especially if you're someone that puts on weight. And when you put on weight, it does something to your self-esteem. And big up to all my, my, my fluffies out there. You know, your girl key, I battled with weight all my life. I used to be a, I think at, at worst, I was probably a 28. Um, but also at that same time, the bigger I was, it also meant that my self-esteem was compromised. And that also meant that I was very grateful for anyone, the dudes who show me attention. I was like, oh my God, so grateful that someone like you could like someone like someone as bad as me. And so it paved way for some violations. Let's call it what it is. But that's all right, because your girl key knows exactly how to make pain purposeful, which I believe is the secret to living a good life. Your girl key is here to tell you some inconvenient truths. Pain is a part of life. 
Adversity is a part of life. Tricky situations, frustrations, upset, it's all a part of life. The challenge is, what do we do about it? Do we let it define us? Or do we find the difficult life lessons in hardships to help us make more better informed choices in the future? Only we get to decide that. So it's your girl Keely Tavener. I'm here. I'm trying to share this video to my um my my Keely Tavener page, but for, for some reason I'm not able to do it. If somebody would share this video, I would be most, most grateful because well, I guess I'm slightly distracted by trying to share it to myself. But hey ho, such is life. That what happen when you're starting at the bottom and you're working your way up. Sometimes you just got to do lots of different activities and tasks by yourself until maybe Oprah Winfrey calls and you escalate up. You know, we can but dream. So it's your girl Key. I'm here. I'm talking about the pandemic and I'm talking about things that I've noticed in myself and I'm going to encourage you to start to think about what might you begin to start to pay attention to? Because by the time big chaos happens in our life, I'm here to tell you what will happen is there's going to be a string of small things that happen that we don't pay attention to that actually is really important for us to begin to notice, start to notice. So one of the things I noticed in myself that I had to kind of check myself is, you know, so these are offices. I used to rent out offices and now there's nobody here um, to some degree. But what I noticed is small things would happen. So before I'd always wash my cup up at night. And then one night I'm just like, well, what's the point? There's only me going to be here in the morning. And that began to happen day after day after day. till I got to the point where I was like, well, what's this going on? You know, so it's these small signs where we're starting to give up, where some of our usual habits begin to fall by the wayside. If anybody knows what you're talking, you'll keep talking about Give me a like. It's not that I'm nasty. It's not that I don't have, you know, hygiene habits. I do. The challenge is, what I've realised is we humans, we need people, right? So when there's nobody coming to the office and it's just me, I stopped washing up my cup at night. I just did because there was no one else to bother, you know, no one else to think about. So that's one of the things to be mindful of. Be careful. Start to notice what being alone may do to you. Just start to notice what being alone does to you. Pay attention. And one of the ways, I tell all my clients this, you know, pay attention to your bank account. What do you start to notice in terms of your spending? It's a very good place to start because our behaviour usually has some sort of financial impact. For some of us, we might start smoking a little bit more. For some of us, it may mean we start to, I don't know, we might start what some of the, well, I know that I got onto the shopping thing. I know that I started to buy a lot more books. Now, some of these things aren't problematic, but we have to pay attention. You know, I, you know, at the beginning of lockdown, I remember getting parcels. I couldn't even remember ordering them. I just never shopped that way. So what I would say to you is you need to begin to start to pay attention to little odd behaviours that start to happen. Pay attention. For example, it may also be about your, your self-care. Like, for example, you may stop some of your grooming routines. Now, we all know the nail shops have been closed, so some of us have stopped that. And that's fine. But there might be small little things you start to drop off. If you can, try to find a way to bring that back into your life. Pay attention to the small stuff. Because by the time you get really, really, really depressed and sad, what's happened, it's, it's almost been, there's been a string of small and seemingly, they seemed insignificant, but together they all begin to mount up and they begin to reveal something about us. So what I've realised is by being in my offices on my own, day in, day out, some of my practices, such as making sure the place was tidy in the morning, I had nobody to kind of be here, so some of that dropped off. I had to pay attention to that. Secondly, I'm encouraging you to start to look at your bank account. What are you noticing? What are the things that you're starting to buy? 
what are the things you stop buying? Have you stopped? Go now it's challenging, right? Because look, let's be honest. They're going to send us into another one, right? Pay attention to yourself. If you, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's Fran. That just says how difficult it is to isolate and end up alone when you're not used to. People need company. You know what, my sister? No shame in that. Humans need humans. We are not designed to be all alone. It's not good for the human spirit. It's really not good for the human spirit. When I noticed, I'm going to be real, you know. I'm going to be real, you know. Some days I'll know I'd leave all five cups. There'd be no cups. Because every day I wouldn't wash up like I used to. Why didn't I wash up like I used to? Because there was no one here. So I realised, hold on, there's no clean cups. That's not, that's not the self I know. That is not the self I know. So I, I had to bring that. Personally, I brought it to my therapist. Just talking about the kind of like, the small subtle changes that I began to notice. Sharp Pink, Amazon Prime woes. Yes, I hear you, my sister. Pay attention to that. Remember, we're about to go in again. So we need to start to think about that. For some of us, you know, and it's been kind of like, oh, you know, lockdown weight. Be careful about lockdown weight, you know, because as someone who struggled with their own weight, you know, I'm scared of going back in Evans. Yeah, like I found that very difficult. Like, you know, it's like even just because it's a size 24, don't mean it look, it doesn't have the same, you know, look about it. So it, it's just not, you know, so we have to pay attention. Yes, the gyms may well be closed, but what can you do? Scotty, we're not designed to be alone. No, we're not designed to be alone. It's not good for the human spirit. Trust me, I need people coming here so I have somebody to wash up the cups for. It's unashamed, like, it is can get very lonely. Humans need humans. And I believe that this goes against the nature of humanity. It's too much alone time. So we need to be thinking about how can we get our touch? How can we, inter you know, in... Mm -hmm. Well, you'll have to inbox me if we really want to talk about that. But how can you get some of that needs met? And that may mean, you know, for some of us, listen, let's be honest, right? It may be that you need to rediscover your area, where you live, start to, you know, like, get active. You know, one of the things I've done of late is, and I, I know that I'm spending a fair bit of money on it, but I've, I've bought Amazon Audio. Is it Audible? So I now listen to my books. And I still buy the books, interestingly. So I buy the book and listen to the book, which is costing me twice. But if I really like listening to the book, I also want the physical book too. So as a kind of like little vice has come out of lockdown or whatever we're in, I'm okay with that. Plus, what I've also done is I've tried to make sure I got physical. Now, for all the people who might need a little loving and you might not have your regular the one by your side and you might have Mr. Right now up the road. You need to be thinking about whether that's legal. But, you know, that can also be a very difficult challenge with regards to being by yourself. There's no two ways about it. It can be very difficult constantly being by ourselves. You need to pay attention to that because what will happen is sometimes some odd behaviour will creep up over you. So whilst it may sound bizarre that I'm talking about dirty cups and not washing them up at night, I think it's very important we start to pay a close attention to the small, subtle things because this is an incredibly difficult time for humans. We are not designed to be alone and it's very difficult. And what I've noticed is like when I go to my local gym, I make sure I say hello to people. Sometimes they might be the only people that I physically interact with. That for me is very important. So you need to think about what you may need to be doing to assist yourself. Is your girl key? If you've got any questions about the blues that is starting to impact on you, please feel free to ask me. You can also inbox me. I'm happy to take any of your questions. But the reality is, it is very difficult times that we're going through. In addition, we need to be thinking about our relationships. We need to be thinking about the people in our phones who we are in contact with. The challenge is with such a lack of 
um, activities for humans to do, it can sometimes mean that we become over occupied with people in our device. We need to be careful about that. Some of us may have high expectations of others. Some of us, big up my empath crew, whoop whoop, may give a lot of love, be very kind and considerate of others. And some of us may want that back. Now, some months ago, when the first lockdown happened, I made a workbook called Stay Insane. If you're still interested in any of the tips in that, they are still very noteworthy. This may be an opportunity for you to begin to think about what can you do with yourself? The challenge is for my people who are out there losing work, humans need structure. We need structure. It's good for us. We need a routine. When we have no routine, when we wake up and we Netflix binge and then we Uber app, Uber eat, or we eat the leftover pizza from last night, this all becomes a recipe for a downward turn. Now, I ain't saying have your pizza. I had one on Saturday night. It was quite satisfying. But we want some moderation. That's all. You know, the next morning, I can't react to it with a little bit of porridge, some berries to kind of realign. So we have to keep an eye on these things because if we don't, it can start to take over us. Pay close attention. Another thing that you, we need to be careful of is if you're someone who consumes alcohol, we also know that that is another area that can start to spike, just as things like smoking can spike. And we know these things can take a, have a raft of consequences. So begin to pay attention to yourself. Are there things that you do that you're a bit... Mm, in addition, and I was speaking to my assistant about this lately, pay attention to your mood. Pay attention if sometimes it just starts to get to you. Pay attention if you notice that you start to feel angry. Pay attention if you notice you might start to feel furious. Sometimes we may take those emotions out on other people when actually it may well be the legacy of the reality that we find ourselves in, which is incredibly difficult. In addition, I know somebody here mentioned something. Hey, Scotty, how are you? Do you have any questions about the pandemic? Do you have any observations that you're noticing about yourself? While your girl Key is a massive fan of being, well, I'm not necessarily a fan of being positive because the problem with perpetually being positive um, is that it may often result in us suppressing and ignoring uncomfortable feelings so the problem when we ignore and suppress our uncomfortable feelings it often means we're sweeping things under the rug and when you sweep things under the rug it has a way of coming back at you with a ferocity that will astound and surprise yourself yeah so your girl key is not one about let's just constantly be positive no it's not helpful to people if you ignore the fact that actually it's a very difficult time we need to accept and acknowledge it's very difficult. We can do things to assist ourselves. Like of late, I find myself listening to a very lovely upbeat CD on YouTube, Soka 2018. I just find it very uplifting. The music is uplifting and I got my good headphones. You know, the headphones that you pay for cost me 40 pounds for them soundproof, with uh, sound reducing headphones. That for me, boy, I must be getting old, you know, but these are one of my little treats now. I make sure, and I bought them at the beginning of lockdown, these proper good headphones, not just the little one you get with your phone, the little good ones. So that actually when the gyms were closed, I started to pound pavement. I discovered a farm near where I lived. I didn't even know. I found parks and trees and stuff where I live. Never did that before. We also know the lockdown we're going into is going to be winter. So it's going to be very different from the summer sun that we looked like the best summer we ever had, didn't it? Really and truly out there. It was like lockdown and it was one of the most warmest days. Sharp pink. I truly feel for those who have been severely affected by this pandemic. I'm classed as a key worker, so I have some continuity. I can only imagine how impactful it would be if I didn't, if I didn't have that. However, I am also mindful of burnout. Yeah, sure. You know what? I think that's a really beautiful thing that you've mentioned. 
Um, but what I would also say, if you are a key worker like myself, one of the pe problems for people who are carers in caring professions, let's say, is they are inherently bad at looking after themselves. So burnout is a very real threat and risk to ourselves. This is one of the reasons why, if you've ever gone on my Pain Into Purpose course, let me, if you if you are considering working with me, if you've been watching on the sides and think, oh, oh, I'm not too sure, maybe I should, feel free. I've got my Pain Into Purpose course starting this Thursday. We've got two places left. Click the link below, I've pinned the link. Join me for the Pain Into Purpose course. One of the challenges, if you are a helping professional in the caring roles, you're a key worker, it means we can still go out there. Yes, Key for Change offices will still be open. We are we are um, given a special, I think we're exempt because it's therapeutic work. And obviously, you know, as a therapist, I help lots of people who are also in the NHS and police, you know, public services, custom, you know, people facing roles. But the challenge is, is we have to ensure we look after ourselves. You have to learn to diarise self-care, diarise idle time when you just potter around the house and you don't have no agenda. The challenge is if we are helping professionals are inherently bad at looking after ourselves. And if you saw my newsletter that went out today, I also talk about the importance of when the, the body the body stops working, you know, when actually we've done too much to ourselves, we've given to the point where we are absolutely threadbare, helping professionals, empaths, you need to prioritise yourself because you can't give from an empty cup, there you go, so thank you for that Shah, yes, and in terms of, you know what, if you are someone who has lost your job, your career, the optimist in me is going to encourage you to firstly download my Stay Sane tips, but I would also encourage you to think about going to the Open University. There are a whole raft of free courses. A range of people I'm working with right now are signing up. They're saying yes to themselves when, you know, often some of our dreams were denied to us as children. When some of our dreams were not permitted by our family and friends because it wasn't acceptable to them. So we became what they wanted us to be. And all the time the dream was trapped inside of us. Big up all my peoples who are doing open university courses. Who are saying yes to themselves. And going step by step, inch by inch. To say yes to a part of them that wants to try something different. Yes, it is adverse times. However... And this might speak to people who might have a mindset like myself. So I'm very much aware that I am in any adverse situation. I will always be thinking about ways that I can empower myself. I'm very much aware that not everybody else has that mindset. And for some people, yes, it might just be doom and gloom and you won't, you can't see any opportunity. And that can, you know, I'm very much aware of different mindsets. However, that can take you into a dark place. One of the ways to assist yourself is what is something small that you can do to empower yourself? Something small, even if it means doing, I don't know, a seven hour course on open university to exercise a part of your brain. I don't understand how our society is promoting binge watching, where everywhere else binge eating has been classified as something demonic. For the larger ladies who have issues with food yet our society promotes advertises it everywhere that it's acceptable to binge watch well the challenge is binge binge watching doesn't evoke your imagination it's not good for the human mind everything in moderation but if you're going from box set to box set to box set to box set it's not healthy for you you got to get up and you got to move Find a way to create a structure in your day. And I don't care, but we're going to have to also find a way to move our bodies. Yeah, it's really important to move those bodies. I don't care whether you got a Fitbit for your fat bits. I know I got a Fitbit for them bits, but there can be such a benefit. I've done 17,000 steps today. Go on, kid. Look at that, eh? Living my best life. There you go. 17,000 steps. What? Be a size eight by the time I come out of this. But the reality is, my people, um, find a way to move. Your phone will have 
you know, little devices that can probably tell you if you've moved enough. But really pay attention. Want to big up my bedroom, Natalie Green, who encouraged me to get a fit bit for the fat bits. Because um, actually my job role means I sit an awful lot. And the weight was creeping on in places. It was just making it hard to see the V. Let's have it, ladies. We know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? When it was very difficult to see the V, I was like, nah, man, it's getting too difficult now. And so a Fitbit is really helpful for me personally because it means I can quickly have a glance and see, like, no, there's been no movement. Sometimes it might mean you just got a pound pavement. Put two little headphones on, play a little YouTube playlist or your audio book. But do something with your mind. Sitting there is just not great for our greatness. Pain into Purpose graduate. Highly recommend. Big up, Shah Pink. Thank you for the love. Natasha Powell, key worker I am too. I want one space. Oh, bless you. If you'd love a space, Natasha, inbox me. I would, it would be an absolute honour. We have a payday deal. At the moment, it is just £160 to do the four-week course we go live, we do it on Zoom. I give you my all because that's all I got, you know. I put my heart and soul into what I do. Mrs. Zoe, oh, I'm starting Thursday, so excited. Zoe, you should have got your email. Claire, I hope we're getting um, getting through our to-do list. Claire is my, definitely my right-hand woman who assists me. Remember, I have the ideas and the visions. And if you're someone who's creative, you have ideas and visions, but you need a team around you. One of the things I worked out when growing key for change is lots of coaches would just kind of like tell me to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that. And I'm like, oh, that ain't my skill set. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate Excel. I, I can, I am a visionary. I'm a visionary. I have ideas. I get too many ideas. But the challenge is I can't do it by myself. And I want to big up the team, my close inner circle who support and assist me. Claire, thank you for always having my back. She just gets me. And one of the things I've worked out in life, people, is it's beautiful to have people around you who get you. Some of us, because of the way we've been raised, we're very used to not being accepted. Some of us are very much always like always chasing down love, wanting validation. And I'm here to tell you that when you have people around you who get you, it is just lovely. It's just so freeing. And one of the things you go, key done in lockdown, let's have it. I've had to block them. I've had to block another one because I just don't need the mind games or the kind of inconsistent say one thing, do another thing. We ain't got time for that. It's one of the most serious times in human history. People, if people ain't genuine with you, if they're playing mind games with you, listen, you're trying to get through this pandemic. You've got to look after yourself. Let's abuse the block feature. If you know what I'm saying, yeah, girl, key you like, because it's no joke out here. It's serious times. And we've got to pay attention, pay attention to the small stuff. Pay attention to all them convenient apps you have on your phone. Listen, when I had the Amazon app on my phone, you know, listen, that man, me and that man at the door was on first name terms. Every day, two, three days is coming down here, especially with that, uh, that prime business, yeah? Some of us, we need to take them convenient apps off the phone. It's not healthy for us, not good for us. Tap, tap, boom, bang, it's at your house. And then some of you, I don't have this problem. If you buy something, for example, let's say some glasses, and then you don't want it, you lot don't refund it. I don't understand that. Listen, I will put that at the door so I don't forget. Some of us are ordering all this junk online and then you you know what you do as well? You tell yourself another lie. You tell yourself, oh, I'm going to sell it on eBay. Because all the people who are lying to themselves, you know you ain't selling it on eBay. You ain't got no time for that. So you're just stacking up stuff. And then the next thing, what do you do? You cart it off to the charity. You've got to get woke about this, people. Pay attention to your bank statement. Pay attention to your bank statement. It's serious times out here. And if you notice, they keep telling us how it's convenient to have this app, that app, the other app. You know, you can have all kind, all manner of food delivered to your housing. Well, to be honest, I did just eat the other day. And I'll tell you, them people are lying because that weren't no 30 minutes. We was, we was hungry. 
We was hungry by the time that man came. But he's sorry. So just all they said was they're sorry. They didn't even give you nothing for free. But there you go. Miss Sold a Dream. Zoe Barlow got my email. Yes, pop the apps in my calendar already. Good, good, good news. Good to hear. Natasha Powell, any of you have any questions about getting through lockdown, about how best you look after yourself, please inbox me, ask me questions. If you need to talk to your girl key, I've also pinned my online diary where you can schedule a call. 15 minutes, talk to me. I'll help you to understand what might be going on for you because we all need some assistance because it's tricky times. Fran, I was reading a post this morning that said, don't beg for friendships. Well, you know what? The thing is about posts, they're all lovely, but the reality is sometimes we all, we all, we all, well, that might be too general. Some of us don't have that issue, but lots of us empaths often get caught in trying to convince people of our worth, that we are valuable, because we're so nice and we're so caring and we're so giving. The reality is, empaths can be quite manipulative as well. So we, I know we think that narcissists are the horrible people and then we're poor victims, but your girl key is also tell, here to tell you also a broader story about that. Empaths can often give with an expectation of reciprocity. Therefore, when it doesn't come back to us, we can be quite um, furious. Sometimes it may mean we up the ante, we give more, we act like we are okay and it doesn't hurt us when they ignore us. So they too blue tick us and we don't hear from them until they feel like calling us five days, seven days, 14 days later. Let's be having it. So some of us have to learn that actually some relationships are toxic and sometimes it's not even that person's fault. Sometimes they're triggering off an inadequacy in us that may come from yesteryear. And Depending on where you're at in life, you may have a you may have a hold of that. You may understand that. Some of us don't want to go back. Some of our past has been particularly traumatic. I totally understand that. And some of us only want to move forward. In terms of working with myself, if that is something that might be of interest to you. However, your girl key knows that many people have wanted to work with me. And sometimes, you know, it t can take us a number of years to get to that point where we're ready. And I'm fine with that. How long have I been doing this now? 20 years, I'd probably say. I'd say 20 years. Your girl key. I'm here. I ordered earwax candles on Prime. What for? It's still by my front door. Sha, please, please, please. Earwax candles. What's earwax candles? You see the nonsense that people are buying? Earwax candles. It's still by your front door. Do you see what I'm talking about? Sha, as we speak, go into your Amazon Prime account. Go into your Amazon where it says orders, click it, yeah? Go and find your earwax candles, yeah? Click the next button that says return. It says R-E-T-U-R-N, return. And when you click that return, yeah? Depending on the type of return that you're doing, trust me, I've become an expert on returns on Amazon, yeah? You might get the little code. When you get to the post office, which we're gonna have to join some long lines for, yeah? The woman, she scanned the little code. And you give them the parcel. Job done. Sometimes by the time you've done that little hee, in the post office, the, the refund's already in your account. Earwax candles. You guys are making me laugh, you know. You like earwax candles, you know. I beg you take a picture and send that to me on my phone. I need some jokes tonight. You know what? You should give me that refund, actually. That that should be my money. Uh, Fran Glams. Happened to me too a few months ago. Eat. I nearly ate my arm waiting for them. Oh, God, yeah. They take the mick. They take the mick. They're all lying, innit? Oh, we get this food to you in 15 minutes. You know, when you see 50... And then you think... When it gets to, like, half past and you think, hold on, it's half past, then you think, oh, well, I can't phone yet, innit? L leave it a little five minutes, innit? You don't want to look like some hungry beast, innit? So, like, so then they look, oh, well, I'll give him another five minutes. So then it's 22. Then you call it 22. And then, you know what? When I did mine, my, she's 22, 20 to 10. And I said, oh, um, where are you? She goes, oh, he's just leaving. We're sorry. You see? They're skanking us, you know. They're skanking us. Scotty, turning, tuning in while I'm bathing my kin. Very interesting. Bade good. I was going to add another comment, but uh, it's in... in you know, in the interest of the children, we will leave it there. Babe, good. Um, don't forget to put 
that no, I'll leave that there. Franz, sometimes people's promise to do one thing but blame you if they can't get full ownership, but never honour their promises. That's the kind of friendships I don't need, most definitely. And whilst you girl Key has touched on, you know, the importance of, you know, considering if you need to block people for your own sanity and your own well-being, I'm also going to encourage you to pay attention if any people come crawling out of the woodwork, you know? Because lockdown also has done that as well. I've seen certain numbers flash up in my phone. I was like, I didn't even know that name was still in the device. Yet, for whatever reason, they must have been bored and on their scroll and thought, let me give that one a try. Let me see if I can find a glitch in the matrix. No, bro, not today. We have done the work on ourselves and we have elevated onwards and upwards. It's your girl, Key. It's serious times. There's no two ways about it. Good morning. Good evening, Vanessa. How are you doing? I'm taking any of your questions about how best to look after yourself during this particularly difficult time. We also know that people are going to be losing their jobs. They're going to be sat with uncertainty. And for many of us, that will be incredibly difficult. The challenge is what can you do to empower yourself? Let me tell you something. You see depression? and disempowerment go hand in hand. Feeling disempowered and depressed go hand in hand. So what is one small thing that you can do to empower yourself? Big up to all my clients going through open university saying yes to themselves, giving themselves a different avenue to explore. Who are like, you know what Key, I've been meaning to do that for ages, I'm gonna give it a try. It may, it may well be if you have lost your job, it could be a perfect opportunity for you to think about, do you want to revisit education? Because, you know, depending on where you're at, that could also provide you with an income if you take the loans. Now, you may have an issue with that, and I get it, you know, because it's far from cheap. But some debt, I believe, is healthy debt. I know I would rather have a, a debt for for my academic purposes for student loans than to have a fat car with 22 inch rims outside big up my education crew yes i regard that as a healthy debt rather than having debt for having a louis gucci chanel bag or or whatever it is that people seem to to value these days if you agree with me do let your girl know i learned a lot this year i'm important too i guess one of the things that i've learned really during lockdown when you know I was really quite frightened about my business what it would be like you know I think fear just took over me which is one of the reasons why you know the, for me the antidote to fear is faith and out of that fear was well I guess what I did was I channeled my energy remember my people everything is energy and if you don't channel your energy Often that energy just becomes back in on you. It's one of the reasons why we can feel disempowered. It's one of the reasons we feel depressed because our energy isn't being utilised for, I believe, creative purposes. One of the things when lockdown began in the first instance was the fright, the scaredness. You know, my business was, was vulnerable because, you know, my business is set up in a particular way was it gave me the space to begin to consolidate thoughts. It's how I created the Pain Into Purpose course. That with the time on my hands, I then began to synthesise, bring together the ideas that I believe are one of, well, it's the reasons why we get depressed, anxious, and it also, Pain Into Purpose, teaches us how we can use adversity for a greater good. So, you know, this is about encouraging you to think about what can you do in the limitations at the same time some of us is going to be very difficult and some of us it may take us into a downward spiral and that is the sad challenges of the times that we're in for some of us it's just gonna you know kick off lots of sadness ill feeling sometimes uncomfortable memories for the past we need to pay very close attention to that and that's one of the reasons why i'm always encouraging people to check the small stuff you know what i'm saying if you find out you start, you know, smoking a bit more, doing things that you even you find a little bit odd, just pay attention, especially for all my drivers, people who drive. If I was going to do my doctorate, one of the topics I may explore is driving. 
because I think anger and aggression can often come out, seep out when we drive. So pay attention if you might be smiling and acting okay in lots of areas of your life, but actually when you drive, you may feel an aggression and an anger come over you. You might start cutting people up and all of them things or driving people down the road if they've cut you up. Pay attention to that. That is an example of how, you know, some things are impacting on you, that you have a frustration going on for you. Lornette David, learning something new is really empowering head. Yes, Fran, I know you've started that big course. Well done you, sister. Well done you. I'm thinking I need to look into work I can do from home, but currently a healthcare, in healthcare for an agency. Lornette, does that feel like you're ready to try something different? Because the reality, if you're a healthcare worker, you know, you're on the front line and it may mean, you know what, sister, you may be done. I think there's no problem with being done. There's no problem with saying, you know what, I've had enough. And I think if I'm very brutally honest, I think this was what the challenge was about clapping for the nurses. Because the reality is if, if the whole of the public are standing on the street clapping for nurses... You know, the challenge is, well, nurses and doctors, NHS staff and key workers. Um, where What happens to those people when they are frightened? What happens when they're petrified to go to work? If they're being coerced because everybody's outside on the streets clapping, what do they do with their feelings of fear and anxiety? Do they suppress them because they'd be worried that they'll be letting down the public? Do they brave it, put a, a smile on it? For me, it's one of the reasons why I was not clapping, because I guess a, a psychotherapist who has intimate relationships with human beings, I see a very different side of the coin. And actually, and the public, we don't know, do we? The public think, believe, we believe it's a good gesture, but the challenge is for so many healthcare workers, it was absolute pressure to defy their own feelings and put themselves in what they felt was incredible danger. Natasha Powell, um, dancing with fear as you don't, as if you don't, it can paralyze you and keep you stuck. Most definitely. Um, thank you for that, Natasha. One of the things I would say about fear is, is your relationship with fear determines the quality of your life. What, one of the things that my journey has, has taught me, and I want to thank all the people, my supervisors, friends who have supported me on my journey and who continue to um, support me. I, I think I have a simple philosophy for fear which is face it. Sometimes we're not ready to face it and that's fine because sometimes life puts us on in a predicament where we have to encounter our fears. But it's what you discover on the other side of fear. For lots of us, fear has us paralysed and it has us paralysed, but what it also does is it means that we have a very active dialogue in our mind. Oh God, yes, we have 101 hypotheses about what will happen if I did this, what will happen if I do that, then this will happen, then that will happen. Fear may have you paralysed, but your head can get very busy thinking about all manner of ways it can go. So what happens with fear is we can often be in our head which we also know will impact on our body, sweaty palms, anxiety and the like. So, you know, fear, some fears for me, no two ways about it have taken me into my panic zone. This is one of the reasons why on the Pain Into Purpose course, I'm very much about small wins. You know, you can't eat the whole feast. <laughs> Big up to all my painted purpose people, you know, but it's about how can you do things in small chunks? And, and my story attests to that. You know, if I would have thought about when I was at Ikea on the tills, if someone would say, oh yeah, Key, in this 20 years time, you'll have your own business, you'll do this, that, the other, I'd be like, no, no, no. What are you on? What have you been smoking? The challenge is how I've got where I've got has been small, consistent steps. So that I would encourage you to think about because some change is mammoth to us. It feels exponential. It feels like we're out of reach. And this is especially true if you have also suffered with never feeling good enough. 
If you know what I'm talking about, never feeling good enough, let your girl key know what I am really, you know, on about is an inferiority complex. And I'm particularly good at talking about how I've, you know, I continuously journey with minds in terms of facing my fears, believing in myself and honouring my truth in spite of the adverse responses that that may well have. Because in my heart, I know I come from a, a good place. But often the truth is inconvenient. It's true. I'm wild behind the wheel. My daughter recorded me once. I looked as mad as hell. Fran, that's very interesting. If you have that kind of erratic driving, as you know, you feel free to inbox your girl key. I haven't started my course yet. Hopefully student finance will conclude this week with my residency test. I'm hopefully through. Good luck to your Fran. It's your girl key. Now, I've touched on... A few various areas about pandemic blues. I've looked at the challenge of not of missing out on the small stuff. Because, you know, when you start to miss the small stuff, it can be a really important sign of a decline. And I use my own example as not, not washing up the cups at night because no one was here. No other people were coming into the office and it was just me. And I think that became quite a stark reality for me when there was no clean cups because I just used them all and hadn't but don't worry there was no fur growing in it okay you know my mum brought me up right there were no fur growing in the cup or nothing like that I did put it to soak you know one of those big up the soak crew who put things to soak five days later it's still soaking you know how that goes um I've also spoken about you know being isolated and alone is actually against the human organism we are social beings by design and too much time alone is just not good for the human spirit so think about ways that you can find a way within the rules to interact with others, be it by a device. Device has its place, but sometimes we may need to pound the pavement, go for walks, socially distance and all of that stuff because humans need humans. I'm sorry for all the people who think you can do it alone. To all the people who think you're self-made and you got by you where you got all by yourself. That's a lie. We are social beings. It's a part of our innate nature. And you, no matter how much you think about it or how much your ego is or how much you tell yourself you don't need people, the reality is you are human and we are social beings by design. That's that. Another area I touched on was paying attention to your bank statement. My people, we got to be careful what we're buying because some of these convenient apps are inconvenient for our finances start to check out what it is if the amazon man is now your best friend if he knows you by first name if he's coming to your house three or four times a day you got some challenges you might need to take the app off your phone in addition big up to all my amazon purchasers who purchase nonsense ain't saying nothing about earwax candles if you if you know who it is you know who you are and then you're not returning it. You got it at your front door and it's just sitting there gathering dust. Your girl Key is here to tell you, go into your Amazon account, click the orders um, area and find the item and click return. Because a lot of us are starting to accumulate clutter. And that's a part of the pandemic. Sometimes you have to give yourself grace. Like the other day I was eating carbs. I just found myself wanting carbs. And I said to myself, you know what Key, just allow yourself. Sometimes you just have to allow yourself if some serious times are going through. So you just allow it. And then when you allow it, it doesn't become such a big thing. It just kind of fizzles out all by itself. So I also want to say to you, it's very difficult times. And at times you may just need to give yourself permission. If you need to go through the drive through McDonald's, yeah, we all know. We've all seen the programs. It's not great for us, but sometimes... Who don't, who don't like a cheeky McDonald's? Big up my cheeky McDonald's crew, especially in the drive through I know that's one of the things that ends up on my bank statement if I'm not looking after myself. Pay attention to your bank statements. Look at your ashtrays. Is there a little bit too much cigarette butts in there? These are important factors. Also, I want you to encourage you to think about the people you have around you. We've got to wait for people to start coming out of woodworks and we need to decide, is it healthy for us? To have this engagement with people does it unsettle us do we feel anxious 
Are we waiting for them to call back? Have they too blue ticked us and not got back in touch? Pay attention to your device. Some of us need to audit our device. I'm encouraging people out here to abuse the block feature. We abuse the block feature, big up my empath crew, to save our sanity. I've also touched on the fact that if you are a care helping professional, it is of the utmost importance because remember now they're going to want to give you overtime. Remember all that time, all them years, they didn't want to give nobody no overtime. huh? Now they want to give people double pay, triple pay and all of that stuff. Yeah, because stuff got risky now, huh? Now they want you. Now everybody's clapping for you. Pay attention to your self-care. Pay attention to the food that you're eating. Watch out if you start to slip. It always starts with the small stuff. Pay attention to your driving. Pay attention to anger and, and rage. When that happens to you, it's highly likely stuff has been suppressed. If this speaks to you, inbox your girl key. If you need assistance, I'm here to be of service to the people because I believe that is my calling learning something new i've also talked about ways that you can empower yourself because remember disempowerment is a part of the whole mental health problem remember we live in a society that makes you think you're inadequate when actually there's been lots of political decisions that have kept us just so big up all the people trying to purchase a house it ain't easy out here this is just one of the ways that we may feel inadequate about our situations but actually, pol politically, there has been decisions that have been made that make it harder for people to progress socially. Yes, but the challenge in our community is that we often blame ourselves when there's actually external events that make things like progression far harder for people from the lowest stratas. Oh, you never knew I could get political. I need to get political. Trust me, because a lot of us blame ourselves and we think there's something wrong with us when actually we live in a society that gives us mixed messages. For example, binge eating, bad. Binge watching, good. Lies. It's not good for you. Everything in moderation. Duvet day after duvet day, Netflix watching and Uber eating is not good for the human soul. Let's be having it. Franz. OK, I've read that one, Franz. I haven't started your course. I ordered your book, Why Love Hurts. That was a good spend. Thank you. Thank you, Shah. I do appreciate the love. I know that you love. Thank you very much, Shah. And you're not getting a refund on that one, I hope. Candice Bryan, true talk. Two, boo, two, two tick block crew. Candice, you know what I'm saying, sister? Because listen, sometimes you can just look at your device and you see a name on the phone or a message and it just, vroom, you know, and some of us, let's be honest, some of us will care about those people too but they won't love us in the right way. They won't care for us in the right way. Some of them are triggering off our old unhelpful patterns. And so we have to be kind to ourselves. Often the fear we have about blocking people is in our mind. Usually we've told ourselves a bit of a story. Yeah. If you know about, I can't remember that song actually. I can't remember it. Um, we've told ourselves a story. One of the things I always do as a psychotherapist is I'm always passionate about listening to what are the stories people have told themselves we tell ourselves some whoppers of a story and once you tell somebody else and you have to put it into words and you're like oh I didn't quite realize I thought of it like that it starts to sound odd to you yeah big up Zoe I was only saying this today McDonald's and Starbucks are constants in society when they closed I felt unsettled and when they came back I felt comforted I'm good with it it's ev of every now and then normalizing treat that I was grateful to have in those difficult times. I hear exactly what you mean. I hear exactly what you mean. I had a Starbucks today and I'm really mindful of the politicalness around Starbucks. But you know what? I didn't have a coat. I was cold. I was out. And you know what? Sometimes I just think I'm worth it. You know, simple as. I'm worth it. Yes, big up to the politics. You know what I'm saying? You know your girl key had to go off the reading list because it's serious times we're in. However, what I would encourage you to think about are the small ways that you can empower yourself. Feeling disempowered is a recipe for common mental health problems. And the reason why I say common mental health problems is because your key, girl key is passionate about your potential. 
And I believe mental health problems are a symbolic sign that all is not well in your life and that in order to honour your potential and your authenticity, some changes need to be made. But for some of us, we live in fear and so we grow comfortable with the uncomfortableness. The more you grow comfortable with the uncomfortableness, I'm here to tell you an uncomfortable truth. It will impact on your health because everything is energy. Bottled up emotions do not go anywhere. You will become emotionally constipated and that will have adverse, adverse, what was it? It will have adverse reactions on your body. It is not going anywhere. And so I respect why people are often fearful and often uh, cagey about coming to see people like myself. I know that lots of people want coaches and they want solutions and they don't want to look back to get to understand what may have gone on. This is one of the reasons why I assist people with my coaching program, which is called Pain Into Purpose. We start Thursday. If you are interested, do inbox your girl key. But we also know as a psychotherapist, I can assist people to look at the root cause. Yeah. And remember, some of us don't understand the root cause. And as long as you don't understand the root cause, the root cause is doing you. It's one of the reasons why you may never, ever feel good enough about yourself. If you never feel good enough about yourself, that is coming from somewhere, my friend. And if you decide to work with me, I'm going to help you to get to the root cause of that. I'm going to give you all I got. Anyhow, where are we at now? I'm true. I'm wild behind the wheel. I've read this one. I've read this one. Discourse. Dressing up makes me feel good too. A nice lipstick. You are absolutely right. And it's one of the reasons I kept my office because it meant that I had to do my office attire, attire, which means it took me out of the kind of house clothes every day. Because again, Fran is a very beautiful thing that you noted. You know, not getting dressed, being in house clothes, leggings and t-shirt, legging and t-shirt is not helpful for us. I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, people have come back to my office to see for one-to-ones is because we, we need that interact. We need to put on the shoe and put on the frock and do their hair and jump in the car and feel like we got somewhere to go. It's very important for humans. It gives you a sense of purpose. And I don't care what your sense of purpose is. At the moment, my mum is knitting a jumper. And if that gives her a sense of purpose, it's knitting a jumper that gives her a sense of purpose. It's not about what the thing is. What is fundamental and crucial for people is to have structure and a sense of purpose to their lives. And so, while we are being disempowered in ways that are astonishing and infuriating, my encouragement to you is find ways to empower yourself. Because if you don't, you are highly likely to be engulfed by feelings of powerlessness, rage and... fury and some of that you'll be right to feel that however we have to be mindful we have to be mindful of our greatness people always decide is your girl key it's now 20 to 11 please can i go home now i would be grateful great greetings adrian lee from bermuda bermuda that is requesting for people from the UK to come and work online there. I am still on that path. It is still a part of something that I'm thinking about. I've just got a new few other pots on the pan that are boiling. But don't think I forgot. Big up the Bermuda crew. It's your girl Keely Tavener. If you've got any questions. If anything I've said has spoken to you. Or if you want to work with me and join me on my coaching course. Pain into Purpose. Well I'm going to teach you the life principles that keep you stuck. And the life principles that can help you to move on and up with your life, feel free to inbox me. Do take care of you, because if you don't, no one's coming to save you. You have to learn to save yourself. Take care.